So, um, you know, from all the testing you've done, would you say that most people, and if you even have a percentage possibly that most people are iodine deficient, sufficient, excess, what are your thoughts on that? Um, If someone is not supplementing with iodine, our lab shows that about 90% of the people will be deficient. Wow. And I know in David Brownstein's book, he says 95 or more percent. And I know when I talked to him and maybe he, he shared with you that he thinks everybody is iodine deficient. So, you know, and I would say 90 plus percent. It's very rare to find someone that is sufficient in iodine unless they've been supplementing. And when you say supplementing, what if they're consuming iodized salt? Is that enough? Um, No, that will not do it. Okay. Uh, What if they're eating natural foods that have iodine? So, you know, like shellfish is one, maybe some kelp. Um, So no supplementation, but at least getting those foods in maybe every day, maybe every few days, would that be sufficient? I'm sure, I guess never say never, but in our experience, it, it is not enough. Okay. And the, so, the reason being mm-hmm. is our data shows that if somebody shows up iodine deficient, it takes 50 milligrams a day for two to three months to wow. reach sufficiency. So in order to get sufficient from a dietary standpoint, it just is very, very difficult. Wow. Um, so I typically have my clients on the 12 and a half. Sometimes they move up to even maybe the 25. It's not as common, but I mean, I think there's like one client that moved up to the 50, but it's not as common. So Mm -hmm. in your labs, do you see that 50 seems to be kind of good to get, like, it sounds like you're saying it takes about the 50 milligrams to get, um, you know, well saturated for about a few months. And then maybe what would be like a kind of, a maintenance dose, or is there even such a thing? That's also a tough question. But with the the supplementation protocol that Dr. Abraham developed and Dr. Brownstein uses, you start with 12.5 milligrams a day for one week, and then you double it. So 25 milligrams for another week, and then 37.5 for the third week, and then 50 milligram for the fourth week and staying on 50 milligrams for the three month total, and then retesting to see where you are. You know, and keeping in mind, if you start increasing dose, and you start feeling maybe a detox reaction or not quite up to snuff, you know, stay at that dose or back off a little bit. So everybody's a little bit different from a detox level. So that's the reason for the increasing dose over a, a relatively long period of time. You just don't want somebody to start 50 milligram and run into a problem. So that gently increasing the dose over the month time frame seems to be best. Although, you know, it varies with uh, doctor's office to doctor's office. Some people start out with 50 milligram and away they go. Other people are a little more cautious and start out with 12.5. Okay. And once they kind of, so let's say they were taking the 50 milligrams for a while, then they, you know, take one of your lab tests and they show sufficiency. Um, and let's say just the bromide is, you know, not at the levels where it's not in excess and even the um, chloride or the fluoride. Sure. Out, then should they stay on the 50? Should they go down to 12 and a half? Like what have you seen? And I know it will vary by individual, but in general, have you seen a kind of a good coasting dose? Um, 12.5 to 25 milligrams seems to be a good maintenance dose. Although we talk to a lot of people that say, Hey, I feel better on 50 milligrams. So they just continue on fifties. Yeah. I think in Lynn Farrell's book, um, there was all these doses. Some were really high and then, yeah, some of them seem to end up at the hundred or 50. And, um, because I don't do, you know, I have to basically my clients, it's voluntary if they want to do your testing. And so, I don't know for sure. And so I always kind of take the more conservative approach by leaving it at 12 and a half, but I bet some of my clients would do better with it just because, you know, it affects your thyroid. I mean, iodine. So, you know, with that thought, why, why do you think that so much mainstream and even some of the naturopathic doctors are in this belief that, you know, iodine is something really dangerous and we should be really careful that it may cause hyperthyroid and just ruin your thyroid health when in reality we may actually need it. So why do you think that's kind of the narrative? 
Um, I think old habits are hard to break. You know, that, that's the information they learned in medical school. And I guess the, the bottom line that we found over the years, when following the, the iodine supplementation protocol, people feel better. And I guess that's the bottom line. Okay. Um, and, it, you know, if you think of the iodine dose that has been used, you know, in the, within the last 100 years, some of the dosing is up to the gram quantities of iodine. So, you know, the, even though 12.5 or 50 milligrams sounds like a lot relative to what has been used, and there's a, a good review of the literature on our website uh, in our research section that just looks at over the years how much iodine has been used, and just relatively recently, uh, iodine has quote unquote become poison. Mm -hmm.